happening guys welcome back to the channel for today's video we're going to be checking out the transformers legacy evolution deluxe class beach coma and paradise parakeet yes this figure does include a parakeet as an accessory which is nuts but don't worry more on that later on you know we are very close now to finishing off the mini bots i think after they release studio series broad and there's maybe two or three left to go so definitely excited to check this guy out in terms of the box art we get some sick graphics of him in both vehicle and robot mode and i love how the parakeet is kind of rolling out into battle alongside the tune buggy that is nuts but as we flip around here to the back of the box we get some really cool product shots and wave three into legacy evolution now means that evo fusion has evolved into the characters just holding their accessories i mean damn that is so whack i don't even know why they bother promoting it at this point but here for the top of the box we get the scan me for the character bio the barcode and upc at the base so let's check this guy out he is one of the few new molds for legacy wave three so yeah definitely should be a good one and here we have Beachcomber without the Paradise Parakeet as don't you guys worry we will get stuck into that later on in the video but I can definitely tell where the majority of the budget went for Wave 3 as this guy is quite solid literally because in terms of the plastic the second I got him out of the box I was like damn do I still have the inner card strapped to his back because he is a pretty hefty little unit and do you know what another thing I want to talk about is that when this guy was rumoured to come out I had recently checked out the Bumblebee and G.I. Joe crossover and this character and that figure share very similar alt modes and the bumblebee handled the roll cage kibble atrociously so i was hoping that this figure would do a slightly better job and damn did it i mean look at that in terms of the back profile it is pretty clean i mean i like the way this piece of the roll cage kind of stacks inside the chest and i don't think the hill spurs look too bad my biggest issue would be the seats you know the roll cage itself is more than enough to kind of stabilize the figure and due to the way it transforms you can pop these pieces open and i do think there was maybe a way for them to have stacked the seats inside because i just think that would have looked a little better i mean it's not the end of the world but in terms of the figure i mean you guys know we have to do it let's compare this to the actual g1 character design and i do think this is probably the closest they've come i mean don't get me wrong the power of the primes release was very strong but in terms of scale and articulation when you stack it up alongside some of the more recent mini bots it does fall kind of short quite literally but yeah in terms of the detail a very nicely sculpted face unfortunately i do get a bit of battle damage for the side of my visor so maybe one of those pesky decepticon blasts have deflected and smacked poor old beachcomber in the head but really nice detail for the chest this to me has always reminded me of some kind of engine block but i will say the figure would have definitely benefited from a nice metallic silver spray especially for the headlights we have for the june buggy and also i want to talk about is that the panels are very smooth on this figure he doesn't seem as complex as some of the other mini bots we've seen such as Warpath and Huffer. He does seem to be a lot more animation accurate, which isn't a bad thing, but... I did just think it was something worth bearing in mind. Now, in terms of articulation, because he is quite chunky, I was expecting him to be a bit of a brick, but absolutely not. So the head is on a ball joint. It can look up and down as well as rotate left to right. So that's pretty cool. Very sturdy hinge joints out of the shoulders. They can't quite bend out to 90, but that's due to the thick rubberized tires. Yes, rubber tires are back for an actual mainline deluxe. I don't think we've seen this for ages. So definitely excited to touch base with these when we check out the vehicle mode. We do get a nice rotation the biceps single jointed elbows as well as a wrist rotation which also was a surprise considering all of the kind of kibble or i guess just the sculpt we have wrapped around the hand and a proper waist joint so yeah that's pretty cool the hips can kick forwards that far as well as back way past 90 so he could quite literally kick his own head never mind his ass literally could smack himself on his bonds but in terms of going out to the side very good you know out to 90 a bit of thigh rotation single jointed knees and ankle pivot which i love to see so in terms of articulation definitely really well done now we have to talk about accessories and we will bring out that paradise parakeet and i'm actually going to smack it on his shoulder because it's so tiny i probably won't be able to show it off in my hand and yeah, it's pretty nicely sculpted and in particular painted. I mean, look at the eye detail. It's very rubberized though. And I will say that if you were to knock it when on the shoulder, it's probably just going to pop off. So if you are going to display him with this, I definitely recommend to smack it into the port we have here on the side of the arm because I do think this could be quite an easy accessory to lose. But really awesome they included this. Kind of makes me wish that they had packed in Lizardo with DevCon. But not the end of the world and as you guys saw from the back of the box the most important feature this guy has is that evo fusion gimmick which is simply that you take the blaster smack it into the hand and bang there you go we've never seen a transformer holding its own weapon but yeah not bad sculpt i will say i have a few issues with this in terms of the way it looks for the vehicle mode but for the most part for bot mode not bad and i guess if that parakeet poops on his shoulder you can stick the parakeet's ass up the end of the blaster and you can have old beachcomber blast the poor old parakeet into oblivion so 
yeah, you do have a few options in terms of how you can display him. Now, as we check out a few comparisons, here we have him alongside the Earthrise War for Cybertron Bumblebee, Studio Series 86 Cliff Jumper, the Legacy Velocitron Cosmos, throwing it all the way back now to Kingdom, here we have Deluxe Class Huffer, and to kind of round things off with a few of these Deluxes, here we have him next to Kingdom Warpath, and to go back to my earlier point, I do think there may be a slight difference in terms of aesthetic between the amount of sculpted and surface detail they've packed into Beachcomber when you compare him alongside the likes of Warpath and even to an extent Huffer, they do just seem to be a little more involved in terms of their surface detail, I mean it's not a bad thing, but I did just think it was something worth bearing in mind, but in terms of size, he definitely isn't the smallest out the mini bots even towering over the likes of Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper. And for two slightly larger comparisons, here he is alongside the Studio Series Voyager Class Ironhide and the Earthrise Optimus Prime. Now as we get stuck into the transformation, to tell the truth guys, it couldn't be any more straightforward than it is and in some ways does remind me of an old 80s G1 figure. So to kickstart things off with, just take the shoulders, hinge these out to the sides and the back of the roll cage does tab in for bot mode. So you will just want to gently detach it about to there. Once you've done that, we can now take the whole upper chest and basically extend it upwards and the head will shoot into the chest, which I thought was really cool. Very simple, very effective. We can then take this piece here angle it upwards. Now on the inside of the biceps are these little tabs. They do just gently slide into these notches. So snap that in there and do the same here for this side. Just click that in. And in terms of the leg transformation, again, very straightforward. So come here to the base, take what will become the front of the roll cage and just gently hinge these pieces down. We can then flip the seats forwards on both sides. Take these panels, hinge them outwards and do the same here for this section. Now, I personally like to combine the two halves. Now, it just makes the next step way more easier in my opinion. So snap them in together and make sure that both of the roll cage pieces on either side are also snapped in. Now, as you guys I'm sure would expect, we're basically just gonna flip the thighs inside the hollow gaps that we have here until you reach about this point. So there are these two little slots here and here that are gonna smack themselves into these tabs. So you do have to kind of line it up so Basically, just shoot that one in there. Make sure that the opposite side is snapped in. And in terms of the seats, if I just lift one of them up, there is a tiny little notch and a tab that the seat will peg into. So snap that in. Make sure the other one's gone in as well. Combine both the front and the back of the roll cage. Flip here to the underside. Snap these in. And bang, here we have Beachcomber fully transformed into the base June buggy mode, and it is very cool looking. I mean, considering how simple the transformation is, I have next to no issues with this at all, but there are a few finishing touches that you can smack on to make it just look a little better. So if we bring back in that important Evo Fusion gun, there is a tiny little notch which we can slide over the back of the roll cage to kind of give him a weaponized look, which to be fair, I don't think looks half bad, but because this is completely painted out of glossy black, it does have a tendency to kind of scrape and rub on the plastic of the roll cage so yeah that does kind of suck but it also acts as the front ball bar so there are two notches here at the front that it does slide into and personally I think this looks so much better but because the gun doesn't transform at all we are left with kind of half a ball bar with a nozzle sticking out of this side and a peg sticking up I do wish in some ways they had adapted the design that we saw from the legacy crankcase in the sense that there were pieces which kind of flipped down to form the blaster but definitely not the end of the world I also wish that maybe they could have smacked on a bit of metallic silver here to the headlights but we even get some nice dashboard detail so I thought that was a pretty nice touch. Gunmetal seats. I love the rubberized tires. Now they've done this, I'd love to see it implemented on future deluxes. And why are we seeing rubber tires on a deluxe and not on the likes of a movie masterpiece figure? It is kind of nuts, but this is what he looks like from the underside. I just love the way the June buggy looks. I hope we see more Transformers which use this as a vehicle mode. And in terms of the tiny little Paradise Parakeet, you can smack him here on kind of the rear tire. Although in reality, this would probably hook onto one of his wings and churn him up. So yeah, it may not be the best idea but considering all of those wheels are pinned on and rubberized he does roll probably the best I've seen for a modern deluxe in a very long time. So jumping into a few vehicle mode comparisons, much like in bot mode, we'll just very quickly run through a few of the deluxe mini bots. So first up, here we have him alongside the Earthrise Deluxe Class Bumblebee, Studio Series 86 Cliff Jumper. Legacy Velocitron Cosmos and this is kind of a crazy comparison because of course this guy is a UFO and this is a Doom Buggy but again throwing it back to Kingdom here we have Deluxe Class Huffer 
Kingdom Warpath, and I will say that I think Beachcoma is probably one of the largest mini bots, at least uh, of the more recent ones that we've seen in terms of vehicle mode, because yeah, he's roughly what you'd expect here from Warpath. And then for a few slightly bigger ones, we're bringing out that Studio Series Voyager Ironhide, because I think it's probably one of, if not the best SS86 figure we've seen. Maybe not the best, I still think that goes to Hot Rod, but still such an amazing figure. And then finally, rounding things off with the leader himself, Earthrise Optimus Prime, which is literally the go-to contemporary comparison when dealing with some of these legacy figures. Now, not that you guys probably need it, but to keep consistency over on the channel, I will jump into reverse transformation. So, to kickstart things off with, you are going to want to remove the blaster, set it off to the side. We can then separate these pieces of the roll cage, just like that. Then come here to the underside, take these panels, just open these sections here up, and basically just separate the legs away from the arms. So, give that there a little wriggle and then hinge these here all the way down. We can then close up these panels, take the seats, flip those upwards, and then take the front of the roll cage, flip this upwards, and basically just split the legs. We can then take the arms, angle these here out to the sides, and personally, I'd recommend to bring the roll cage, or at least the back of the roll cage, in a little bit, but don't have it in just yet, otherwise it will restrict you from hinging this down, because now, bang, we're gonna compress that down, and then what you can do is bring this in, and it will click into place just like that and there we have beachcomber transformed into robot mode so very simple to do and wrapping up on this review for the Legacy Evolution, Deluxe Class, Beachcomber, and not to forget Paradise Parakeet. Considering this is one of the first Legacy figures which I'm checking out in a very long time, it is a great breath of fresh air and it definitely is a great addition to the line. Now, if you already own the Power of the Prime Scout slash Legend Scale figure, do you need to pick this one up? I think ultimately that's going to come down to personal preference because that original figure does look pretty decent, I'm not going to lie. I will say, however, that this Deluxe version appears to be a lot better in scale with some of the more recent War for Cybertron slash Legacy mini bots, and not to mention articulation is definitely leaps and bounds better than that Legend scale. So if you are after a better version of Beachcomber in those aspects, then yes, this one definitely is good to pick up. And in terms of robot mode, I am thoroughly impressed. I mean, this is the first time I'm getting Beachcomber into the collection, and I'm definitely glad I missed some of the past ones. You know, I also like the inclusion of the Paradise Parakeet. Whilst it is so small when it is rubbery, I do think it's cool. It's nice that they threw that Easter egg in there, because it is kind of a cool scene where Beachcomber is trying to translate what the bird is saying and in terms of the transformation super simple incredibly effective though i mean damn it's so nice to get a june buggy deluxe back in the collection and in terms of the rubberized pvc tires i hope we can see more of that going forwards and not to mention they've smacked all four wheels on pins which is just an absolute dream for me so definitely one of the strongest legacy deluxes that i've reviewed and will undoubtedly probably be one of if not the strongest figure to come out of wave three because our mod of Megatron, spoiler alert, does have a few wonky design choices, but you guys let me know what you think of him down below, and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.